Tyler talk about this morning? Good things. Good things. It, it was really good. The film was really good. Uh, very proud of the way he played. Got rid of the football. Played with great composure. And, uh, you know, we always knew he could throw the ball. He's extremely accurate. You know, the O-line gave him some time. The receivers were open. I mean, I think it's a team deal. It wasn't just Tyler, I think. And he'll tell you that, too. You've dealt with a lot of quarterbacks over the years. How much does it mean for the rest of the team when they see a guy finally take some real hits and bounce up and then make plays? It's it's good. It was kind of funny on one of them. And I laugh about it right now. I don't know if you remember. We, we actually ran a, a play where we dummy our cadence. Mm -hmm. And the ball was snapped, and it hit him in the ankles. Mm -hmm. And he's reaching down to get the ball, and he does a clock him right in the head. I just died laughing. And, you know, it was one of those funny, funny. He, he even started laughing. I said, it's pretty, yeah, it got me a pretty good coach. And Dan told him, said, look, protect yourself when you go down, you know, when you, when you go get the ball. But that was kind of a funny part, and that was one. Um, the one sack that, that, that we gave up, it really was Tyler. Tyler was trying to make a couple things happen, and he knew it, and he knew the pressure was coming. He said, coach, I thought I could hold on to the long head. My fault wasn't nobody else's fault for mine. And uh, the rest of the time, he got rid of the ball on time, and they did a great job up front. You know, uh, not letting people come free. The one or two option plays around. I mean, he's no threat to Don Smith. No that option, but he seemed to read the defense right and make it and, and not make a, a bad Absolutely. decision. Absolutely. Well, you know, you, you do that a couple times in a ball game. That'll keep defenses honest. You know, now the coverage has become a little bit more bland, and you know, it becomes a lot easier to throw the football. Now people talk about some of those big throws you made. Some people want to say, oh, those are NFL throws. But when you watch them, do you see NFL throw or dangerous you shouldn't have done that throw? Well, there was one of them in particular I thought was just an outstanding throw. I mean, he threw it, and you had to have great anticipation. So as a quarterback, you either better have a plan or great anticipation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he, you know, he said, Coach, I saw it coming open. Uh, when I asked him, I said, why would you make that throw? He says, I knew he was in that area. I had confidence in my receiver being there, and I knew I could put it there. And I said, well, hey. When you've got that type of confidence, that's good. You know, there's a fine line between arrogance and confidence. Which and, he's got the, and he's got that confidence. One hit Jamie on across the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a really good throw. I mean, he stuck right in a small window. Uh, he anticipated the throw. He saw the defender break out, and he had confidence that Jamie was going to be in that area. That's a good deal. I think a couple of years ago, he would have done what I call the turtle, which is kind of get in your shell and hope they don't hurt me. Well, I, you know, I, I will say this. It's, it, fundamentally, he was very simple. You know, his back foot lead and some stuff like that that was – uh, those drills we hit every, every day, and, you know, we show them now we show them on film, which we do that each week. Right. And uh, I was very proud of him hanging in there and getting rid of the football. You know, it was a couple times some things changed on him a little bit, but it wasn't nothing big, and he reacted really well. The thing that was so beautiful is, uh, I don't know if you remember, one of the plays we kind of threw away. Uh, he got caught in a blitz, and we went over it on the sideline, and he adapted to it really, really well. The rest of the day, it wasn't a problem. That showed, that's a sign of maturity. I mean, when those, things like that happen, you know, a kid sees something one, th one time, and it's new, and then he can adapt to it. That's big. You've had these years of work with Marcus Green and knew what he was capable of doing, but to watch him walk out now in these two games perform the way he has, it's just I was just happy for Marcus after he dropped the first one because you could tell he was so frustrated. It wasn't nothing, but he, he, when, he, when he went to see the ball, there was nobody around him. And he, oh, God, i got to catch the ball first. You know, it was one of those deals. Came back and played really, really well for us. I was happy for him. And as you well know, this was the game uh, that he hurt his knee. In, right. You know, so it was, it was a big game for him, too. And now you got Brandon Hill iffy for this week. Malcolm's still out for a week. I mean, you're down to him and Gus Wally at this point. I don't know anything about injuries. <laughs> That's, <laughs> we're just going to the coach on that. Okay. He's already, he's already Look, broke. I don't know anything yeah. about injuries. <laughs> no, uh, we've talked so much about the passing game and how Tyler's done, but you still rushed the ball for 166 sure yards with, yeah. with those four guys. And, and, and I'm going to tell you this. When you see Perkins run, that's a phenomenal run now. It really was. I mean, he did a tremendous job taking care of the football and scoring. I mean, I was, wow. I mean, when you watch that run, he breaks some tackles and big time back I mean, when you watch him and then he explodes down the sideline. That was really, really an outstanding run. And as you well know, towards the end of the game, we ran the ball more and ran it purposely to run the clock down and to, you know, get the victory. I think like Tyler, um, Tyler in the past had a, had a tendency to just want to air the ball out. The dance talk about now, nowadays he's making – He's taking his chances when he knows he can, he can mm -hmm. usually Calcul can win. Calculate. And, and there, was some, there, was, there, there was some teaching of that, too. We yeah. were at the farm. I guess you recall that. Yeah. Remember when they kept throwing the ball deep? Well, we ran back from the farm. We didn't drive the car back. We ran back. We obviously, it got a point across. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. He, and Dan's 100% right. I mean, he's... He's now taking those calculated risks. He's got a good plan. He's playing with some confidence. Uh, just need to keep him going. That, you know, he's a little sore, which he should be. Yeah, that, that play, uh, the little 
that stuck out to me, uh, he talked about it, was that throw to Jamie on number one, it looked like the pocket was collapsing around him. He didn't, he didn't step Shuffle. out there, and then he made a really tough throw. Yeah, he anticipated it, had confidence in his receivers and his offensive line that they were going to protect him. And um, you, if you watch him come, nobody touches him when he shuffles up. And, you know, it was very solid inside. And then when you watch Jamie on break across the, the middle, he had the confidence he was going to be in the right area. And that, that's big in throwing the football. Anytime you've got that type of confidence in relationship with your receiver, it's just like with Bob, it becomes a really, really easy deal. So They're all on the same page. When coaches have to get involved, it's not a very good deal. So you're sitting up in the box and then fourth and one on your own midfield. Dan puts in a retro freshman for the first time. What are you, what are you thinking? And it, but is that, it seems like the situation with Dak is working out very, very oh, yeah, well. That, we, we had went through that. That's what we were going to do. We had that down on our fourth down calls. That was our fourth down call. We were going to make it. And like well, it I seemed like that. on third and short, fourth and short, Tyler knew to run off the field because that was happening. Well, we, we had practiced that, and, and we knew that was coming. Now, you know, Dak, Dak did a really good job and was really excited about it. I told him on the phone, I said, I wouldn't have anybody else with the ball in his hands other than you. I, that's how confident I'm with you. He said, thank you, Coach. When do I get to do it again? <laughs> Chad so, Bumford, you know, he's a veteran guy in this standpoint. He's been a three-year starter. Yeah. And, uh, He's seen every look, he's seen every fire zone, every man pressure, and uh, he, he knows the answers, and, uh, and he knows a pre-snap. And so you really got to do a great job of being multiple with him. How would you grade Caleb now? He's played two games of tackle, and I'm sure he's practiced all spring and in, basically. Yeah, he, you know, I, I see I see improvement in a lot of areas. You know, from the standpoint, of he, he's more confident there. Uh, and what I mean confident, not is just only a pass rusher. He's more comfortable in a run game, and uh, he did a really good job versus those guys uh, this Saturday. In fact, he's working really well, looks like, with Josh, the two, the two of them together. He is. You know, like I said, our whole deal every week is about finding the best, mat, best matchup and uh, putting the right guys out on the field. And that's what's critical. And that's, and that's when you're developing depth, when you have multiple guys that can play in multiple packages. I want to ask you a little bit. Uh, tremendously. The, the line uh, did a tremendous job this week. Uh, and then the backs did a good job of uh, finding those scenes uh, and then making the most of it. It looked like, too, the fact that in, in running traffic is so tough that not only were the seams, but the timing, their steps, everything was right from ball to get to line when the seams were there. But nothing was either rushed or behind count. Yeah, we were we were on time this weekend. We uh, Everything was kind of clicking, you know, and so uh, we were hitting the holes right on time. And, and again, the, the guys up front did a tremendous job. Is there anything special with that pistol formation? I know you were in it with Chris a little bit last year, but with that back being so far near Tyler, is there anything fundamentally that changes with what you're asking them to do? No. No, no we rehearse it every week and uh, make sure our steps are right for all our running plays. So uh, nothing special about it. It's, this almost reminds of 2010 when you spent a bunch of games early in the year just letting guys take turns running the ball, and then as the season went on, you kind of developed who was lead dog, who wasn't. Right now, they're not really separating themselves. They're all four producing. Yeah, they all are, uh, but right now Perkins is the guy. Mm -hmm. You know, he is the, the lead dog, as you would call it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's, uh, he gives us tremendous leadership, mm -hmm. uh, and he's taking over that role, and I think the other guys are beginning to fall. How would you